Hi guys, Miller here. I had an opportunity to travel to Paris over spring break and I wanted to share with you some of my experiences with art at the Louvre. First, I must apologize for the sound in some of the cutscenes and I've added subtitles to accommodate for the background noise. Originally, I intended to perform an analysis on my favorite piece, The Winged Victory of Samothrace. However, I felt that a single piece could not properly represent the most amazing collection of art in the world, so I expanded my analysis to include Da Vinci's Mona Lisa and Bruegel's The Beggars. I hope you enjoy. Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa is considered the most iconic painting in recorded history. Created between 1503 and 1506, it presents art at its best, even to this day. The oil on poplar painting uses simple techniques to highlight the subject, such as aerial perspective and cooler colors in the background and negative spaces. As the landscape approaches, the colors become warmer until her radiant face is highlighted. Evaluating the Mona Lisa takes some interesting twists. Outright, Da Vinci's painting of Mona Lisa herself is unquestionably detailed. However, the background has several undefined vanishing points and is uncharacteristically disorganized. Also, you can even see that the horizon on the right side of the portrait is slanted and doesn't match up with the left. From a formal standpoint, these could be viewed as technical errors. However, Da Vinci would get in certain moods. Uh, from a philosophical standpoint, he, he may have in fact painted a slightly surreal landscape in an effort to imply that the world is not always as it seems. This appeals to the expressive theory. Furthermore, the subject of Mona Lisa has been debated in the past. In fact, if she is the wife of Francesco del Giocondo, then there may have been contextual motivations behind Da Vinci's landscape. It's sort of a subtle jab, or maybe even a joke. Whatever Da Vinci's motivations, it is clear that he managed to capture a stunning representation of the woman before him. The Winged Victory of Samothrace. Discovered in 1863, the Winged Victory is thought to have been created around 190 BC. It depicts Nike, the Greek goddess of victory, descending from the heavens and standing triumphantly on the bow of a ship to commemorate a battle at sea. While this sculpture was discovered near its original site, it was found shattered in hundreds of pieces. When first discovered, there was great debate over the position of Nike's hands. Were they carved poised at her sides as if she had just landed? Since the winged victory was thought to honor a glorious battle at sea, this didn't quite convey the gravity of true victory. It was generally thought that the left hand was held at her side and, given the torque of the upper torso, Nike's right hand was raised. Further debates argued that she was either carrying a trumpet or wreath in celebration of the victory. of the material being presented and how these materials interact in the real world. From a contextual standpoint, we can likely evaluate this piece favorably. Considering the quality and detail of this piece went well above the common commemorative craftsmanship of the time. Unfortunately, expressive theory, it, it's really inapplicable to this piece. Since the artist is unknown, 
and it is in, it's impossible to pinpoint the emotional motivations behind the Winged Victory. Given the Winged Victory's complexity and mass, pieces of this size would traditionally find the most balance in a large, spacious area. But the vaulted and simple arches of the Louvre's Daru staircase provides the perfect location to allow an appropriate amount of light and space for this piece. The expansive area around the Winged Victory allows a viewer to take in the entire piece without feeling overwhelmed. Furthermore, the space around the sculpture allows us to experience it in its entirety as a sculpture in the round. While the Winged Victory may be incomplete, I believe it may have even more impact in its current state. The artist conveys very natural elements in this piece that are still communicating, even though it's broken. I'm not entirely sure that we'd be as aware of what this artist managed to capture had this piece been found intact. Peter Bruegel's The Beggars. Painted in 1568, The Beggars is the only Bruegel in the Louvre and was received in 1892 as a gift. since its creation, but is widely thought to be heavily contextual and perhaps even expressive. The paper hats that the beggars are wearing are thought to represent various members of ancient Dutch society. For instance, the crown most likely represents the king, the shakla probably represents the soldier, and the cap is most likely representative of the peasant. The contextual elements are fairly visible at this point. Perhaps Bruegel thought that everyone, including the king, were a handicap to Flemish society. The expressive points, however, are a bit more elusive. Bruegel's point may have been simply to display that destitution or perhaps even more corruptitude could occur at any time, regardless of rank in society. I hope that you enjoyed this segment as much as I enjoyed producing it. Until next time.